Hey guys, I'm ZSH Plays. Welcome back to Tekton Zoo. The big project that I mentioned last week is still under construction. So this week we're going to be adding a brand new animal into the game, which I'm very excited about. And we're going to be adding it into somewhere that we've not been in a long time, the forest. So we finished the forest back in July when we added the clouded leopard. But I've identified a tiny little space that we're going to be able to squeeze these guys into just to the left of that willow tree there. It's just enough room for a little exhibit and we'll be adding the fire salamander into that space. So this is the area that we've got to work with. Plenty of room for an exhibit and it's always fun trying to get these four meter cubes to look interesting. If you remember the tree frogs and the scarab beetles, the way I normally do it is to use two exhibits next to each other and then put them at a slight angle and then build a, a building around it. But I decided to give myself a bit of a challenge this time. So I'm just gonna use one exhibit box and see what we can do to try and make it look less like just a, a giant box sat next to the path. Um, so I had a, a couple of different ideas of how to do that. The first one I tried was to see if I could completely pretty much hide it with natural or faux natural elements, tree trunks, rocks, waterfalls, etc. Um, and I couldn't. <laughs> I don't know if it's possible. Maybe somebody with more skill than me could uh, could do that, but I just couldn't get that to work. So having tried that for a bit, I went with my second idea, which was much more of a architectural style to it. Um, and that is what we'll be doing here. So first thing I'm gonna do is get some fire salamanders in there so that we can see what the inside of the box is gonna look like. And I really, really like the inside of the exhibit for these guys. Uh, I think it's probably the best one in the game or it's, well, it's my favorite in the game anyway. It's really nicely designed. I love the way there's a sort of uh, tree right in the middle of it. And I wanted to work with that and expand on what they've put inside the exhibit box. Use the new path from the Europe pack as well, just as a little sort of um, entrance standing area for the guests. And then we're gonna start putting the architectural elements in. It's an absolute nightmare trying to uh, work with these exhibit boxes because if you put anything anywhere near it, then you can't select it. The game will always select the exhibit box. There's been a lot of editing in this uh, video to uh, remove all the bits where I'm swearing violently and clicking 4,000 times in order just to select one column. Um, but we got there in the end. You can see some of the um, original attempts at using more of a natural sort of uh, elements to cover it up, which are still there at the moment, but I'll delete those in a second. Um, maybe one day we'll have smaller exhibits that are a bit more manageable um, and the animals won't get lost in them. It'd be so good to have three different sizes, one half this size for the insects and the, the smaller amphibians and reptiles, one this size for some of the larger ones, maybe the Gila monster, it works pretty well in here. And then an even bigger one for the anacondas and boa constrictors, etc. But um, we'll make do with what we've got. So I'm adding some more elements around it to bring this together and um, try and create a more of a cohesive whole. I've done this so there's a sort of visual flow from the lower columns up to the taller columns and then up to the exhibit itself and back down again. And we're gonna start decorating it, just sort of tying everything in together, using some of the Africa pack pieces here to make the front of it a bit more interesting. And we'll copy these round to the rest of the exhibit in a second. While I do that, uh, I just wanna say a massive thank you to all of you for subscribing because we now have a thousand subscribers on the channel. I cannot believe it, it is amazing. Uh, so thank you so much to all of you. That has made me a very happy ZSH plays indeed. Um, so that's the front of it done. Uh, we're gonna move on now to the inside. I mentioned that I wanted to expand on the tree that Frontier have put in here. So I'm using the bramble bushes upside down on the ceiling. And we're gonna copy that all around to sort of uh, feature that tree a bit more. And it also covers up the underside of the plaster ceiling, which uh, is helpful because it's a bit of an expanse of white that's kind of dull. I don't really want that. So we'll cover a lot more of that up and then also start thinking about the area around it. Um, the planting around here is not great. I've obviously upped my foliage game um, since we built the forest, what, six months ago. So um, 
I'm going to do a lot of work around here to make this look really nice. I'm going to be using a lot of the new uh, periwinkle leaves, um, which just came in the Europe pack. These are absolutely brilliant for using um, along with the Drin grass as always, and you can get some really nice natural looks using those. The foliage in the new Europe pack is so good. I'm going to use as much of it as possible. I'm also going to tidy up the top part of the exhibit box as well so that um, everything ties in perfectly and there's none of the original exhibit visible. I really enjoyed being back in the forest and building here again. One of the few criticisms of Planet Zoo that I would have is that once you've built the habitat, put the animals in, and you've made sure that they're happy and adjusted it according to their needs, there's very little reason to ever go back to it. You know, occasionally if they have babies, when the babies mature, you might move them to a holding pen or sell them or release them or, or whatever but that's pretty much it unless you screw up your work zones and the keepers are never going in you don't really need to interact with them again which is a bit of a shame so uh, it was really good to get back to one of the older areas of the zoo and do some more work in it uh, i'm surprised i actually managed to find space for this uh, i remember when i finished the forest i added the clouded leopard and the peacocks and i think when i did that i thought that it was already full but I managed to find space to squeeze those guys in so I'm amazed there's uh, <laughs> you know enough room to fit an exhibit in but there was which is great and this fills in the area between the um, flamingos and the forest cafe really nicely now as in all the episodes since the Europe pack came out I'm going to be using the decals to very slightly weather this structure I don't want it to look too old or anything like that but then I'm going to be going crazy with the moss decals at the top of the structure as a sort of feature I want the the top of the structure eventually to be completely covered in foliage so I'm going to be using the moss decals uh, the new grape vines which are brilliant I've only just used those today really so it contrasts with the white concrete um, which as you know is something we always like to do in this zoo and we're going to use some vines as well and just really give it a lush look. With these exhibit boards, I find if you tilt them forward slightly, you can then hide them into the front panel of the exhibit. So it's just the screen coming out rather than having to have the box attached to it. So that's what I'm going to do here. I think it looks much better, or I prefer it anyway, like this. And we'll put those vines in that I mentioned earlier and then do some work around the structure itself so that it feels like it's in its own little grove in the forest. I've stolen wholesale from uh, Romano Palacios the technique of sinking the ponytail palms into the ground so they look like long grasses. Uh, I think that's a really brilliant look so uh, thanks to him for having that idea. <laughs> a few more decals and then that is the exhibit done so i really hope you enjoyed this thank you so much for watching as always and i will see you next time when i finally finish building the big habitat that i'm working on at the moment thanks for watching guys bye